Yo, it's your boy Logos, and I've said it before in previous uploads that I don't support anybody pushing gender or sexuality on children. And even still, people want to debate this whole topic and say that these children know what they want, even though we can all know and agree children aren't mature enough to understand their bodies or understand the future enough to make life altering decisions, whether it be surgery or taking hormones. But still, nowadays, you have people, including teachers, pushing LGBTQI, XYZ on kids. I did a few videos, maybe like a couple months ago back, about some young students in Britain arguing with their teacher about this stuff. And the teacher saying, um, they shouldn't come here anymore. Don't come to this school if you can't accept people for who they are, as if she has the power to kick people out. Just because they understand that. I think the kid wanted to identify as a fairy or some type of animal, something. It was just something ridiculous and stupid. And the kids were just saying common sense and, you know, I don't know, truth that this kid isn't what he think he is. He's a boy. He's not a fairy. He's not a girl. He's a boy. But for somehow, some reason, and if you think I'm lying, you can go look up lives of TikTok. You can have teachers. You have grown adults pushing this stuff on children. You have parents pushing this stuff on their own children because I don't know they want to seem woke enough, inclusive enough. I think it's just enough not to bully or hate somebody if they're gay or something else. But this whole idea that I need you to tell children you're not what you think you are, or the whole idea that we need to have drag queens talking to kindergartners or school age children or any children, honestly, it just said to me. I'm really not trying to debate that because it is what it is. They're young, they're innocent, let them stay that way. Let's watch the video with Joe Rogan and I think Patrick Bet David from Value Tainment talking about this issue, which is it's just ridiculous to me. We're talking about young kids making life altering decisions. But let's get into it. I was having a wonderful, peaceful conversation with this guy named Anthony Weiner. I don't know if you're familiar with the guy or not. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very you know. Interesting I, I saw guy. that podcast. Yeah. So, so, and I ask him a question uh, where I say, so let me ask you, how good are you at giving blowjobs? And he looks at me like kind of a freaking question is that he says I'm sorry and I said yeah how good are you at giving it he says no I said when you were 11 years old did anybody teach you how to give one no why would they teach me that that's what they're teaching in schools right now in many different places oh they're not doing that they're not doing there's no way they're doing that there right? are books that yeah, do there show books. That. yeah there are yes. books right yeah. okay so if a person wants to sell that book at Barnes and Noble go for it if a person wants to sell that book on Amazon go for it but what do you think about parents that are protesting all over the place where in some districts these guys are saying, no, this is recommended reading by the teacher and it's normal, it's okay, you should learn about this at an early age. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's very clear that there are certain teachers that have an agenda and that their agenda is to indoctrinate children into this LBGT mindset and that this is uh, not just cherished but celebrated. And, you know, if you're talking to someone who is a gay kid, great. That's great. If you want to tell them that it's okay to be great gay and, you know, you should be your true self, great. That's terrific. What my concern with is that a lot of what we're seeing with, like, New Jersey had an uptick in kids identifying as non-binary by 4,000%. Like, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. natural. These are not yeah. normal yeah. numbers. And I think children are very malleable. They're very impressionable. And if you reward them for certain kinds of behavior, if they are, they are praised and cherished for certain types of behavior, I think they'll be encouraged to do that. And I think you're seeing with a lot of these detransitioners that a lot of these kids got encouraged early and got put on hormone blockers and hormones and got mastectomies and got castrated. And now Jeez. they have deep regret. And people don't want to acknowledge that and they attack those people they attack those detransitioners we have always always thought that young children are not capable of making life-changing decisions at an early age that's why we don't allow seven-year-olds to get tattooed right. and now all of a sudden you're allowing seven-year-olds to say that I'm a girl or I'm a boy cut off my breasts and put me on testosterone yeah that's craziness what percentage of parents do you actually think obviously we don't know the exact number but what percentage of parents left right middle think that's okay what do you think that percentage is 
That's interesting. I would not know. I would just be wildly guessing. I would say it's like a loud minority. I really don't think enough people have, I don't know, care in the world for this type of stuff. Some people just see it as something temporary or something that doesn't affect them, but then it does and they want to act all concerned or surprised when it's just slowly been ramping up. I heard about this stuff like years ago from listening to Jordan Peterson, where he was on Joe Rogan podcast. And I agree with Joe Rogan. I think kids are very impressionable. And if you make something trendy or popular, they're going to go with it. And I think the whole idea of what he said about you reward some type of behavior, you have these weird parents want to push this mindset or the transgender stuff on their kids. So you reward them, you tell them this what you what you are, and the kids start acting like what their parents say what they are, quote unquote, and they get rewarded for that. Like it makes complete sense. I mean, that's kind of sounding like parenting, just bad parenting. If a kid is doing something bad in school, you're not gonna reward it for him. You're gonna take his stuff away. You're gonna punish him. You're gonna do whatever you gotta do to make him stop it. But if he does good, gets good grades, be honest, be on time, everything like that, you're gonna give him stuff. You're gonna reward him. You're gonna talk to him. You're gonna praise him. And you're gonna be more likely to keep doing it. So it just makes perfect sense. But I'm not really surprised by this whole teachers pushing stuff on kids. So many saying teachers in school now were just in college marching, screaming, wearing pussy hats, and all this other bullshit. So it's not really surprising. They're going to push this type of nonsense on kids because who else is going to listen to them? They're their teacher. What do you but th- there's even a, if we there's guess, a certain amount say? of people that are in the progressive mindset that is essentially a cult. The, the, it's, look, there's cult-like thinking on both the right sure. and on yeah, the left. Absolutely. It's yeah. cult thinking. It's uh, conglomerations of opinions that you adopt and you defend because that keeps you in the tribe. And the LBGT, whatever the other numbers are and letters, mm-hmm. that th- what that is is it's a it's a flag that you're flying to show that you're on the right team, that you're progressive, you're open minded, you're on the right side of history, yeah. you're inclusive. You know this this is what they're doing, and that that has an effect on people psychologically. I think you should allow people to be who they are. And you should be open to people being who they are, no matter what it is. But to encourage them to go in a specific direction, I think that's there's real repercussions for that. And I think you're seeing that with these detransitioners. You think it's one percent, five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent? You think it's twenty plus? Like if you were to guess, I don't think it's twenty plus. I, I don't think, think so a, either. It's a, yeah. I think it's a vocal minority. The same thing with uh, people that think that trans athletes should be able to compete with women biological women in women's sports it's a very small very loud minority do you think that's kind of like let's just say i'm your friend okay and we're out at a restaurant and you know how there's the guys that uh all of a sudden somebody's gonna say joe you're picking up a topic we're having dinner we're having a conversation hey what do you think about voting this way and one of your friends this guy feels like i have to agree with 100 percent of what joe says because it's joe joe's my boy joe said this Joe, you're 100% right. And then you got one of your friends like, I don't know if I agree with you, man. I think it's this, 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 that, and you're having a debate. Do you think there's a part of the political party where they feel like just because I'm a Democrat, I have to agree with 100% of what everything they're pitching me? There's a bunch of people like that. Yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of like full-on cultists, and they're blue no matter who. Yeah. And that's that's their, their mind and in their social circle. <laughs> I hate people who are like that. Blue no matter what and red no matter what. Like, I really don't care about your parties. I just care about your policy and whether or not you're honest and not corrupt. I hate the whole idea of red till I'm dead or blue. I don't give a fuck who. Like, it just makes no sense. Either way, you're getting screwed over. Like, this is how you talk and communicate. And, you know, I've had conversations with those people, particularly when I was in L.A., and when you confront them with facts, they're in denial. First of all, they don't know the facts. They're in denial about it. They, they think that what you're saying is propaganda, that what you're saying is, is right-wing bullshit and conspiracy theories. You know, I remember when I first started talking to Jordan Peterson about that bill, what is it, C-16, that's yeah, up in Canada, that's that is a, a hate speech law that, that mandates you using whatever the person's preferred pronouns are. And at that point, there were like 48 different mm-hmm. preferred pronouns that were going to mandate. <laughs> And people are like, why are you concentrating on that? This is something that exists in colleges. This is not something in in your world. Like, why why is that of concern to you? Because 
people graduate from college and they Thank take you. these ideas they've been indoctrinated yeah, exactly with and then they I enter said. into the workforce. And that's what we're seeing. Exactly what and that's I what said. killed Bud Light. That's literally what killed Bud Light. That they tried to enforce these ideas that they had been ingrained with in in these educational institutions, and then they tried to put it out there in the world. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, Joe, how old are you? You're, 55. Okay, I'm 44. Okay. I'll uh, be 56 in a couple of weeks. So you'll be 56. Well, you look great for a 56-year-old. I'm just looking at your place. You're walking, around, walk, walking behind you. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's in shape. So, But, okay, 55, you're going to be 56. From your experience at this age, when did you and I care the most about what people thought? Teenagers. What age were you when we cared the most about what people thought? When I was a kid. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So how little do you give a shit about what people think about you today? Well, I don't want people to be wrong. I don't want people to have uh, an incorrect opinion about my position sure. or things or who I but am. But do you lose sleep at night no. with people? Okay, so that's the point. So, but, uh, but also you and I are used to dealing with the opinions of an enormous amount of people. Totally agree. Totally agree. But let's not pick people like you and I. Let's pick okay. a regular guy. One of your guys out there, you know, that, that uh, I won't mention names that, you know, he's always with you. Um, do you think he cares more at 42 years old? What I think about him? Less. Be, less, yeah. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so, it's life experience, right? So let me ask you this question. As a 55-year-old man, if you were really gay right now, Joe, would you care about coming out? I wouldn't, but I do have friends that are my age that do care, and it's sad. Okay. It's, it's, and they would, but they're worried more about how their family is going to perceive it and how their, you know, the family's going to be treated about it. You, you know, by the way, I'm not trying to convert you to, you know, for both of us right now to That's make okay. an announcement, public announcement right now. <laughs> Joe Rogan and Patrick Bay David came out and... Uh, we're both getting married. We're both getting married. <laughs> Who takes whose last name? So... We'll hyphenate it. <laughs> like good progressives. When I see a dude with a hyphenated name, I'm like, yo, bro. Yo, I got a hyphenated <laughs> last name, Bet hyphen David. But I understand Rogan, Bet David, or Bet David Rogan. So I want you to think about this. The part where I go is the following. The statistic, traditionalists, 0.8% mm -hmm. are gay. Boomers, 2.6%. Then it goes to 5 point something. Then it goes 10%. Is it really 10%? Oh, yeah. Gen Z's right now is 21%. How much of them are regretful? Do you want to pull this? Can, uh, Jamie, can you 21 look this? 21% gay? 21% of Gen Z right now is gay. Identified. Is it gay or LBGTQ? L all that stuff. Because all you, the... can, you can be non-binary and slip right in there with like a, a real Joe, fucking loophole. Check that out. Look at that right there. Number of LBGTQ identifying adults is soaring. Yeah. Look at that. 0.8% traditionalist. Yeah. Boomers 2.6. Gen X 4.2. Millennials 10.5. Like, look at that. It's double for Gen Z. Like, I'm just barely a millennial. But Gen Z, it makes absolute sense. Like, come on now. You have social media. You have the internet. You have pornography, if you know what I mean. I can't say the P because, you know, YouTube. But you have all these different things. And that stuff get wild. You have Reddit, you have 4chan, you have so much access to entertainment. You have more sets, more explicit stuff in entertainment, whether it be TV shows, movies, music. Like, come on, like, it's just, it's everywhere. So it makes absolute sense why this generation, the people from 20 or older, or like 30 something, is so high when it comes to LGBTQ. S Y Z, Z Z Z, U I, like it just made absolute sense. We could we got all these factors playing into it. Traditional is zero point eight. That's a jump. And then you got Gen Z's around twenty one percent, right? Okay. So when you look at the statistics, why would Gen Z become gay? They care about what other people think. You know, this is like, right. you, you know, it's kind of Young. versus the traditionalist. Dude, if I'm like 72 years old and I'm gay, guess what? I'm coming out. Right. I'm like, hey, man, I yeah. am. What do you want to do about it? I'm going right. to go and hang out with Jose over here. Yeah, and leave me alone. Leave me alone. Do what you got to do. So I think, you know, we're truly messing up with a generation that really cares about what other people think. And we're screwing them up in a big way. We're also, they're growing up in a time of social media where exactly. caring about what other people think is way more enforced. 
because you're getting so much more feedback than people have ever gotten before. Yeah. Like a regular person might just be communicating with thousands of people in comments and, and arguing about things on, on social media yeah. in, a, in a way where you would not interact with so many random people that you don't know. Yeah. So, and, and even you, that's a good point. Like even the social dilemma thing, kind of like where you're going where these kids are so worried about what other people think. Yeah. I think I think we're uh, I think it's a um, I think it's a big mistake. And I think we're going to pay a price for it. Uh, uh, and it's going to take us a decade or two to see the results of this. I think so, too. And I think there's going to be a self-correcting thing. What would f- fear what I fear the most is the detransitioners. I feel terrible for them. I feel terrible for these girls that can never have children now, and I te- for terrible for these guys that are castrated and. Yes, I can't imagine. It's just the the whole thing is just very yes. spooky because people are making life changing decisions. Now, the, does the, does that mean that I'm anti trans? Not at all. If you're a grown adult and you feel like that's going to make you happy, mm. I'm with. I fully support your ability as a grown adult to do whatever you want, mm-hmm. as long as it's not hurting anyone else. That makes you happy. Sure, if that makes you happy. It, yeah. I don't know what makes you happy. If that makes you happy, I I am a freedom person. I believe you should have freedom to do whatever you want. However, I do think that there's an indoctrination aspect to this, and I do think there's a social contagion aspect to this, and that's what Abigail Schreier has uh, documented, and that a lot of these girls that are coming out, they're doing in these clusters of girls, and a lot of them are autistic, a lot of them are... You know, they're on a spectrum and they don't feel like they fit in anyway. When they give them testosterone, a lot of times there's an alleviation of anxiety that comes with testosterone yep. and a euphoria that comes with that. And they say, okay, this is who I've meant to be. Which is so crazy that introducing a foreign substance into your body, or at least a substance that your body does not naturally have at masculine doses, and that you're introducing that to a feminine body and then saying, this is who I naturally am, that's crazy. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense biologically, scientifically. It doesn't make sense. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast. If you want me to react to him, Joe Rogan, potentially interviewing Donald Trump, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do it. I'll probably check out the full podcast because he seemed like a very interesting guy. I think I did one. I think I did one video with Pearly was on his podcast maybe like maybe four or five months ago i haven't really done much of pearly stuff in a while because i don't know just lack of desire unless somebody show me something or i find something worthwhile talking about i'm not going to talk about it but of course i agree with joe rogan and um mr david about this whole topic children are children they don't understand they're not mature enough they're not mentally developed yet so the whole idea of permanently changing them and having a life altering decision being made about them or them making that decision is just sick. And the whole idea of the government could potentially stop parents from stopping doctors or teachers influencing their children to do this stuff is also sick. I remember hearing about this stuff in Canada where I think a father was being jailed or kept from his kid because of gender bending surgery. And I was saying this is going to come to the United States. I'm not saying it's because I want it to happen or because I'm some type of boogeyman, but ideas isn't just restricted to borders. They travel and we have the internet. Ideas travel all the time before we even had communication like this. So the whole idea that a government right across the border from us is doing something and we have same type of mindset of people and colleges and government and other institutions also having the same type of thoughts and communications. Of course, it's going to come over the whole idea of the government or anybody else trying to push this stuff on children or parents or any type of citizen. It's just wrong. If you're a grown adult, and you could pay for it, get take care of yourself, then do so. You can live with those consequences or the benefits, depending on what you want and what happens to you. The whole idea of a child or anybody else who is not of age making these decisions is just sick. And if you support it, I think you're sick, too. I don't care if I like your content. I don't care if I like your politics, which I probably don't. Honestly, if you think you should, if you support this, there's a high chance I won't like your other policies, but that's neither here nor there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is an easy, it is an easy opinion for me. It is what it is. I'm not going to switch sides or I don't know, try to be on the side of what's perceived the good side of history. I don't care about that. This has real consequences and people are going to suffer for this stuff. Let me know what you think. Like, share, and subscribe. It's your boy Logos, and I'll see you next time. Peace.